So I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I invite you in to the imaginal realm. Step onto a circle of leaves under low-lying branches and take a seat. Place both of your hands firmly at heart center. Press gently there as if you are your own weighted blanket. Deep breath. Move in to the imaginal realm. Imagine this enormous blooming magnolia tree. Hear her buzzing. For the bees are gathering in each huge blossom. Hum. Hmm. Hmm. Listen. Listen to the sweet buzzing and ask for healing. May Gaia's healing powers surround you with the love that is sent to you now. In peace and joy, love and light.
as we wish these things for ourselves, so too do we wish them for all beings. For those that we have placed in the circle before, we also join them in the circle. For those both spoken and unspoken, may we all be free. So did Elizabeth disappear? I was just going to ask that. She's free. <laughs> oh, here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted still. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> we thought you had been set free. As, as <laughs> Is that why you're laughing? Yes, I guess I was. <laughs> I hadn't quite realized it. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't feel that way on your end, but it was right. Kind of funny. It was like, oh, Elizabeth's free. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Liza Jane. It's my supreme pleasure. That was lovely. Okay, <laughs> let's see if I can get reoriented here. Okay, so we were looking at happy continuation, which is was chapter six. And the phrase from the Heart Sutra is, listen, sorry, Putra, all phenomena bear the mark of emptiness. Their true nature is the nature of no birth, no death. Even before our conception, we were already here. Half of the elements that make us up were inside our mother and the other half in our father, not only in terms of genes and chromosomes, but in the form of thoughts, beliefs, qualities, and talents. If we look back even further, we will see that we also existed in our grandparents and great grandparents and in their parents and great grandparents before that. Looking deeply, we see that there has never been a time when we did not exist. The day we were born is just the day we manifested in this form. We have always been here. He suggests, look at your hand and ask yourself, how long has my hand been here? If you look deeply, you can see your hand has been around for a very long time, for hundreds and thousands of years. You can see many generations of ancestors in your hands. Your ancestors were not only alive in the past, they are here in the present moment, still alive in you. You are their continuation. We are also the continuation of non-human elements. Thich Nhat Hanh says, I was not only a cloud in a former life, but I am still a cloud now. I am made of earth, water, air, fire. The water I drink was once a cloud. The food I eat was once the sunshine, the rain, the earth. The ultimate nature of reality is that nothing is born and nothing dies. We are not subject to birth and death. 
I loved his um, teaching on contemplating a leaf. So I'm going to read parts of that. One autumn day while walking in a park, I became absorbed in the contemplation of a very small and beautiful leaf, the shape of a heart. It was turning red and barely hanging onto the branch, about to fall. I spent a long time with the leaf, asking it many questions. I discovered that the leaf had been a mother to the tree. Usually we think of the tree as the mother and leaves as the children, but I could see that the leaf was also a mother to the tree. The sap that the tree roots take up called xylem is only water, amino acids, and minerals not rich enough to nourish the tree. So the tree distributes that sap to the leaves, which with the help of the sun and carbon dioxide, transform it into phloem sap, rich in sugars, which the leaves send back to nourish the tree. So the leaves are also a mother to the tree. And this made me realize that as I provide carbon dioxide to the leaves, I am in a sense also a mother to the tree. I was not only birthed into form, I have been busy birthing life in other forms ever since without even knowing it. Thich Nhat Hanh spoke of how the umbilical cord that connected us with our mothers actually continues after birth. He says, when we can see that we still have an umbilical cord connecting us to our mothers, we can start to see the countless umbilical cords that link us to life all around. There is an umbilical cord that exists between us and the river. The water we drink every day flows down from the mountain springs and streams right into our kitchen. So the river is also a mother and there is an invisible umbilical cord between us. There is another umbilical cord between us and the clouds, between us and the forests, and another between us and the sun. The sun is like a parent to us. Without our link to the sun, we could not live and neither could anything else. We are nourished and sustained by countless parents. The river, the wild animals, the plants, the soil and all its minerals are our mothers and fathers. And our mothers and fathers, and our mothers and fathers to all phenomena on planet Earth. That is why in the sutras it is said that living beings have been our parents through countless lifetimes. Thich Nhat Hanh is speaking to us of the web of life, the oneness of life, and of how deeply we are connected. He continues his story with the leaf. He says, that day I asked the leaf whether it was afraid to fall since it was autumn and the other leaves were falling. The leaf told me no. During the whole spring and summer, I was very alive. I worked hard and helped nourish the tree and much of me is in the tree. Please do not think I am just this form because this leaf form is only a tiny part of me. I am the whole of the tree I know that I am already inside the tree. That is why I do not worry. As I drop from the branch and float down to the ground, I will wave to the tree and tell her, I will see you again very soon. Suddenly Thich Nhat Hanh had a kind of insight, very much like the insight contained in the Heart Sutra. You have to see life. You shouldn't say life of the leaf, but life in the leaf and life in the tree. 
my life is just life. And you can see life in me and in the tree. During the nine months that the leaf lived, the leaf traveled far as it had breathed and produced oxygen, which has entered into us human beings. When we practice walking meditation, we receive nourishment from the leaves as we breathe the fresh air, which in part is made by the leaves. The leaf which has now fallen to the ground and has entered both us and the tree it fell from. It is not easy to see all the places the leaf has entered. We should not identify the leaf cadaver we see on the ground with being the whole of the leaf. Only then do we truly see the leaf which is present everywhere. And I was thinking similar, similarly, we need not identify our bodies, our individual selves as the whole of who we are. Only then will we see ourselves. As we meditate on our breath, let us sink into all the ways in which we are present in life, into all the places we have in our traveling through the full spectrum of life's continuation.